Hello and welcome to Hair in the Hawthorne, your YouTube channel that brings you all things other and strange. And I'm glad to be back with you. I've took a couple of weeks off and um, this will be going out pretty soon. I'm hoping. We have a guest with us today who I've only just met recently. But believe me, she's shone out so much that I just thought I've got to get this lady on the programme. She is a breath of fresh air and one of the very rare people on this planet who is always upbeat, always upbeat, such a great personality. And I know I won't do her justice by reading the little bit of bio that I've written down and I will get her to fill in the spaces of who she really is because these titles are just titles. Um, and I think that like with all my guests, she's so, so much more than the titles I can give her. So today's guest, she's a psychic and she's a healer. She's also a teacher and she runs her own paranormal event. So she's a paranormal investigator as well. And one of the things that really intrigued me was we had, we started off having a conversation about, um, about the fairies. And this lady was talking to me about her encounters with the Fae. And I was like, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. You've got to come on my YouTube channel, you know, uh, mm -hmm. because this is the stuff and the content that we want to see. We want to be putting out there, you know, about the fairies within the paranormal world. So without further, further ado, I'm all kind of, I'm, I'm really hyped up today. Um, we have... Helen Lawson, who is also known as Heavenly Helen, which is absolutely spot on for me. So, <laughs> Helen, welcome. Thank you so much for coming to talk to me today. Hello. I can't believe all that intro was about me. Was that really about me? It was. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I've done this all my life, really. We're talking about a lifelong vocation. So it's not a job. I'm very lucky that I managed to do for a living what I love. So I suppose I'm in a good position with that. But yeah, I'm a clairvoyant and a healer and I teach healing and I talk about energies and I talk about your chakras because the most important thing is being in balance for when you get up in the morning, get yourself nicely in balance and then you can take on the world. And I'm a strong believer in that. Definitely. Can you, can, because I think there'll be people who are watching this who don't quite fully understand. They've probably heard words like chakra uh, yeah. and uh, energy being. Can you just explain a little bit what that is? Yes. <laughs> okay. So you've got these, we have um, seven main energy channels in our body and they're like spinning around. And then we've got this beautiful energy that's swirling and our energy is supposed to swirl in and out of each chakra, keeps us nice and balanced. If any of these chakras are blocked, this will then cause a problem. It can affect the way you behave, the way you are with other people. It can affect your health. So many people will come to me for healing and they'll say, I've got terrible kidney problems. And I'll think, no, your chakras are just blocked. So once you're unblocked, then everything's working as it should be on your soul level, on your spiritual level and on your physical level. And they always say, you know, when somebody's had all the chakras rebalanced and you've had some healing, you could be on stage that night in the chorus, but everyone would notice you mm -hmm. because you're completely alive. Mind. and this is how we're supposed to be we're supposed to have strong energies which give us health it protects us and it especially protects us when we go into paranormal investigations because the stronger your aura the more protected you are yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna certainly delve into that with you a bit later <laughs> on when i talk to you about your sort of par paranormal side of things because yeah you do uh, you do um, meet people and i do meet people regularly within the the paranormal community who um are very aware of this kind of thing and very aware of of how to uh, how to protect up with with their energy levels but there equally there is uh, there is a lot of people out there who who don't really know about it or do know about it and are not quite sure about it and um we were just saying just before we came came on to start recording how very important that we both believe uh, that that yeah. is about rebalancing making sure that you've got a clean energy center and, and you're going yes. into this fully protected but definitely get yeah. on to that in, in, a, in a little while I just want to talk to you about um the word healer is is a is a is a, a funny one for people to get their head around and I know that mm. I'll hold my hands up when I used to hear the word healing my instant reaction was, there's nothing wrong with me. You know, yes. when people say, I'm, I'm sending you healing, but there's nothing wrong with me. And That's it doesn't, right. doesn't really mean that in that sense, does it? In your, in your um, line of work, how would you explain healing? It's having your energy. Okay, so your everyday life. Imagine today you've got up and everything was good. You're in a good mood and you've gone into work and slowly there's been negative people around you moaning and groaning. That's starting to affect your aura a little bit. By the time you come home at night, something will 
could have happened on the way home, you know, you could have had a bit of road rage. By the time you get in from work, everything's gone a little bit heavy. Your head, the, the energy around your head's gone a little bit heavy. Your throat chakra might be a little bit um, blocked because you wanted to say something to someone and didn't. That's just one day in your life. Can you imagine years and never having healing? Oh my gosh, your aura is so heavy. I look at people and I think, oh my God, oh my God, you so need healing. And I just, I used to, I'm very tactile. And I used to go, hi, how are you? And touch people all the time. They're like, I'm all right, what are you touching for? <laughs> um, because really I was super cleansing them. I was getting rid of all the negative energy. And then I realized, you know, people have to want healing. I can't just throw myself on people. Mm -hmm. So now as a business as such, people come to see me for healing and I can offer the exchange by actually cleansing the aura. But the first thing you feel when you've had healing as such is light and buoyant. And suddenly the world's a better place. Everything seems bright. Your mind is clear. And all those problems that you had before you actually came into the healing room, have completely dissipated. You're still the same person. We haven't changed what's happening in the world, but we've helped. I've given you the tools to, to help you to feel better about whatever is going on in your life. So I think everybody should have healing. I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah. I think I think just being aware as well of of um, how that energy affects you uh, is is a is a step in the right direction. And there are definitely things that people can do on their own. But I don't think um, it's anything quite like seeing somebody like yourself uh, where you can where you can work together um, on 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 getting rid because a lot of the times, I mean. I read tarot and it's a, it's a classic case of uh, I, I can read all day long for people and um, I get positive results out of it. If I put a spread of cards down for myself, I'm just like, no, don't want that. You know, want a new spread. I can't read it. I can't read for myself. And I find it very, very difficult with Reiki as well to to kind of work on myself. It's, um, you know, can work all day long. And just having that giving yourself that time and that space to reconnect with yourself is, is today more than any, any other is, is terribly important. Definitely. I want to talk to you about, um, your Claire, is it clairvoyancy, psychic, how, how, what, what, uh, where do you put yourself in, in that kind of, uh, camp? I, I, I think with all the, 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 the new age talk, I think there's a lot of, with, with words and titles, people get very mixed up. Mm -hmm. Um, I know when I've, when I've taught, reiki to people um they've left the area i'm based in stoke on trent but um they may have left the area and gone to manchester for example and the phone me up and said they, they don't call them chakras they call them this or they don't call it psychic they call it and it's like it's all right it's all we're all mm -hmm. under the same umbrella it's it's being able to see something so um, there's a lot of clear abilities you've got all these different clear abilities you've got your clear sense into clear audience um and i'm my strength is clairvoyance so i've used a crystal ball since i was a child <laughs> um and i look anything anything with a mirror or a shine or my crystal ball i see images and even when i'm doing my tarot cards I've, I've done my tarot cards since i was a child but even when i turn them over i see an image between i see an image between me and and the tarot cards and that's about you that's the image about you so that's my clairvoyance but then sometimes I, I'll hear, so then I'm getting Claire audience. Uh, Claire sentient is very strongly like now as I'm talking to you. I'm feeling very Claire sentient with you. I can, I've got, I, I can feel um, like a warm glow from you, like a cuddle. It's like you're giving me a cuddle, mm. even though you're talking to me. I can feel like a cuddle. So I think everybody's got all these different names, um, but I think to describe yourself, I would say clairvoyant. Yes. I totally agree with you. I, 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 yeah. I, I, I'm not good with labels either, and I, and I kind of cringe when I'm introduced. I'm sorry, that's, yeah. that's my dog bimbling about. And, um, I do get, I, I do cringe when people put me in a box because it's like, no, I'm not that. And the only word that yeah. I've, ever, I've ever been comfortable with, and it sounds really pretentious, so I never use it, but is seer. You know, it's that. Yeah. For, that for me covers everything yeah. it's like we are all energetic beings and we all have the capability of tapping in it's just some yes. of are in born into this world knowing that and understanding it yes. more than others um so it's, it's just our energy beings that are picking up and and sort of uh picking up on other energies that we we, we can't see so you, you talked about you know yeah. these things starting as a child i mean how how is i i often try and put myself in in the in the place of a family member who who understands a child is growing up with those abilities how were you how were you accepted and received within your family and peers when you were growing up luckily my mother understood it so so as a child i remember saying um 
I was only, oh gosh, I think I was about three the first time. Um, God, there's just so much. My whole life is, everything that we're talking about today, tonight is my whole life. Mm -hmm. So uh, just on my way into work this morning, I saw um, a gang of ghosts, basically. A gang of spirits all walking, all going into an old factory here mm -hmm. um, and clocking on. And I saw like a little bit of a, a time slip as they were all clocking on. They weren't really there. It was, it was, it was yesterday's, yesteryears, what I was looking at. So um, it's just completely normal to me. So as a child, I saw uh, a spirit and um, I, I, I knew it was my granddad. I never met my granddad, but I knew this was who it was. So I told my mother and um, I said, oh, I've, seen my, I've seen granddad. And, and it, now she could have just said, don't be so silly. There's no such thing. Go back to sleep. And then straight away, you think, my mother said there's no such thing. My mother's right. So I'm going to go to sleep. But instead, my mother said, well, why didn't you speak to him? She mm -hmm. um, said, obviously, Helen, you're a receiver. Mm -hmm. Straight away, that's what she said as a child. She said, you must be a receiver. You must be receiving images or messages. So there's a reason that you're receiving them. So answer. So the next night, I, I sort of looked for him and I saw him again. And, uh, and I, this time I spoke to him. And I got this strange thing. It was like putting my finger in a plug socket. I got a strange feeling. It was the link. And I, so I know when people were talking about linking in, I got this link with him straight away. And I knew, I knew what he was saying, where he was. Um, I knew he was on another plane. I knew all this at a very young age. And I also knew that not everybody would understand it. Mm -hmm. By the time I was going to nursery school, uh, in junior school, I was taking my little tarot cards with me and, you know, getting into trouble with the teachers. And I used to see what the teachers were going to write on the board before they wrote it. Um, so I realised then that my mother would say, don't use it at school, Helen. It's it's People won't understand it. Yeah. Um, and then as I got older, you can't resist because I'd look at people's auras and mm -hmm. I'd think, I've got to tell you something. Let me just speak to you about something. Or I'd see, um, I'd, again, in the school classroom, I'd see people sitting there on the desks, but then I'd see angels stood by them. Or um, I, I see something, what I call the angel of death. And mm -hmm. it's when um, you come into the, to your last few days. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing an angel of death over a school child looking at this angel of death and uh, that that school child didn't have long to live at the time i didn't know but then i understood what it was so i did understand at an early age because i was very much completely different from anybody else and in them days it wasn't good to be like this mm -hmm. whereas now it's, it's a lot more understandable because of the tv world people understand it but it was just my natural it was just natural for me. So me and my mother would have these great discussions um, about the spirit world and about energy and why I could see energy coming out of my hands and why my hands were going hot when someone had pain and I just wanted to heal them. I used to talk about these portals that I could see down people's bodies, which were, were chakras, which I didn't know then what those names. I just knew they were like these little holes down people's bodies with black in them. And when I put my hands in them, I'd take away that, the pain from that person. And then I understood that you need pain to show you that there is a problem. So then I realized I was going to the root cause, healing the root cause, then the pain would leave. So all this was like before the age of 10. <laughs> wow. That's a lot to deal with. And I can understand why your mum was saying, don't take it into school because people are, mm -hmm. and still are quite fearful of, of yeah. the side of things and and for for a lot of us it's, it's just very natural and very normal to yeah. you know to understand it into to understand how it works within the physical realm as well and how yeah. it affects you in the in that physical realm so how 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 does that i mean like i've said there's a lot of paranormal investigators who um are practicing uh reiki um or reiki practitioners or healers or um psychics etc how for you does that then traverse into the work you do. Talk, talk us, to us about, because um, I don't know anything about you, the, the paranormal investigation side of it that you do. Tell, tell us what, what that is. Give, give us a shameless plug of the, of the team as well while you're at it. <laughs> well, well, basically, um, I've always, all I've wanted to do all my life is to prove that the afterlife exists because I know it does. Mm -hmm. I could be sitting here. I know. I mean, I've got people in here now with me. I know I'm on my, on my own in my healing room, but I know that there's people because they keep, they keep catching my eye. Mm -hmm. uh, my healing room is in an old Victorian school. And there's a lot yeah. of school children that are still here. And that they, they come running in and out of my room and I see them in, at the side of my eye. So I want to capture them to show to the world. 
So this was my thing that I wanted the world to see that it really, it's true, they exist. So I used to think, well, I'll just take a photograph, or simple, I'll take a photograph when I see one. And it didn't really happen that way because you couldn't, wasn't shown on the camera or, so I used to find it a little bit frustrating. So I started thinking, right, as naturally, I mean, like I said, years ago, I used to just take people in, in my car and say, come on, I'll take you on a little ghost hunt. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't really like the word ghost hunt because we're not mm -hmm. hunting them, um, I, you know, ghost watch, something like that it should be called, a ghost watch. Um, so I used to take everybody around and try and look for different things that were, were there in the darkness. But then I realized I used to see more than ghosts. And this is, I knew I was seeing, there was other worlds here. Mm -hmm. And um, people are just about getting used to the word ghosts. Um, so to suddenly say I was seeing a little bit more than that, because there was, there was intergalactic beings as well um, mm -hmm. that I was seeing. And, and of course, um, the Fae, which is a different world again. So I knew I was seeing other realms, um, but I could see energies. I, to me, I, how I look at the world is different. Um, I look at different, I see different layers, different different colors, different frequencies. And I, it's like a radio transmitter. So I tune into the, what I call the ghost frequency, then I can hear that. And usually what I hear on the ghost side of things, you can pick up on an EVP, but other mm -hmm. people can't hear it. So it's usually me and the EVP have got the same frequency somehow. Mm -hmm. um so i started um well for years i've been taking people in groups come on i'll take you here and take you there and then um i thought i need to set up my own team and then there was one team that actually asked me to join them and i thought okay i will i'll see i'll see what it's like to join the team and straight away they were slightly concerned that i was talking about fairies um and they were like no that isn't gonna we can't use that bit we can't have to cut that bit out mm -hmm. why i've just mm -hmm. said why mm -hmm. so i thought so my sister has always had this ability, but she never wanted it. So when we were little, I used to watch the television and you'd see all this, my sister would see all this smoke forming in the living room and she'd say, go away. And she didn't want to use it. Now she's all grown up and um, she's a shamanic healer and she uses it. So the natural thing would be for me and my sister to go on paranormal investigations. And then my partner, Mark, he's fantastic with all the tech stuff. Mm -hmm. So between us, um, we go on different investigations, go to the scariest places in the world, which I have to say, I get scared. And that's what people mm -hmm. laugh about. I'm yeah. scared of pants. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. My partner, Mark, he's so brave. He'll sit down in a cellar all through the night, talking into the camera. And then as soon as I'm sort of left on my own a little bit, I don't know why. I get a little bit scared because when I do readings for people, I open up my whole heart and soul to allow the spirit world to come in. Mm -hmm. But when I'm in a dark cellar, I don't really want to open up my heart and soul to let the spirit mm -hmm. world come in. So I'm a little bit more careful. So I do get a little bit scared, but it's basically just to prove that they exist. Have I done that? Probably not. <laughs> I yeah. have some reason the camera shy. I, I think that what, I think though the, the the whole thing for a lot of people is, and I do often think about this. If we actually do get evidence, it's going to take some of the magic away from it. I know. You know, yeah. it's it's a strange thing if we do get that solid bit of evidence that the, the, yeah. the other worlds entirely exist. It's going to be, yeah. you know, where 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 does your curiosity go after that? You know, it's like. Yeah you know, these hidden realms and, and a lot of people you, you've spoke about within the paranormal world where when you start mentioning, and, uh, and I do want to talk to you as well about um, intergalactic beings, uh, because it's very much for me um, intertwined. And, and I think and I've often talked about the, you know, we need to start uh, cross pollinating the, these disciplines, you know, uh, ufology and Variology and, and paranormal investigation and it all starts to I think the answers lie in those things being joined up That's that's my perspective. I don't think we can discount anything when we're looking uh, into the, the world of the strange because um, You know you do you do mention Fairies within the paranormal world and people do find it very very difficult although that's easing up quite a bit um, uh, being part of the festival of the unexplained uh, just talking about it there people yeah. were much more receptive um, and asking questions and not and not um and not confused questions either which i i found very very reassuring really um and one of my concerns uh, about the fey world is it's not always what it seems it's not always nice and bubbly and and as a paranormal investigator i think once you start opening up and not really understanding that when you're open you're open to all worlds 
uh, because yeah. uh, for a lot of people it's very yeah. very difficult to tune in specifically to 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 one thing at a time I, I want to start off by talking to you. Uh, no, let's start off by talking uh, <laughs> about sort of intergalactic beings and then we'll go on to the Fae um, because it's something over the years I found very, very difficult. It's it's kind of the core of my fear is classic grey aliens. I think I was traumatised by E.T. as a, as a child um, and this has left me with, I don't want to go near aliens. And it's only recently yeah. that when looking into into more historic uh, uh fairy stories if you like and the and the, the connections that people now are making between that and alien abductions uh that it's really sort of floating my boat so tell us all what do you know about what do you what, what have you seen um what kind <laughs> of things have you experienced with these these beings well there's when it comes to um ufos and anything to do with aliens i've always been a big believer i believe that's the thing i believe that should be my motto in life because i, I think I feel sorry for people that don't believe in things. Mm. You know, they're just so, they're, they're missing out on so much. Mm -hmm. Don't believe in things like that. Why not? Just be open to it. So when it comes to um, be doing investigations, you know, you usually are somewhere in a dark woods or in the darkness somewhere where you can see the lights of the sky. You can see things happening. Um, and I have been in situations before when there's been things that I cannot, well, I live next to one of the best UFO hotspots in Britain basically and um, that's there's so much that goes on there and I remember telling somebody a story I said just over there just over there this is the best UFO hotspot look up there and as I looked up I saw two beautiful silver discs just sort of intertwine back intertwine and go and I thought I went just like that did you see that <laughs> it was just so normal to see it was like it happened on your mind it was great um, so I've had a lot of experiences with seeing things um, I do I have because of what I do um, I draw in a lot of people that are interested in this. So for years and years and years, I've had people coming to me with their different stories mm. because you know the comment they they if they look at me as if to say thank goodness someone I could talk to. So they'll talk about abduction, and a lot of my customers have feel that they've been abducted mm. at some point in their life. I think we're all being cherry picked, at, you know, one by one. All of us are. I remember once years ago, I was only. 12 or 13 and I was walking through the park with my friend which I know you can't do this day and age at 12 and 13 but um we did then and um it was sunshine and we were chatting away and the next minute something there was a big bright light in my face and it was the park the park keeper as such with a bright torch saying what are you two girls doing here it's late past 10 o'clock well hang on it wasn't it was two o'clock in the afternoon what happened there was a moment where something happened that day we lost quite a few hours of our mm. life um, another time um, I was lying in bed and um, a big flash happened outside and again I was a child um, and I remember the bed shaking and strange there was a strange light that came into the room and something I know that something happened something came in the room that day but for some reason I feel that they come have a little look and then go again and I think sometimes it's maybe our ancestors coming back in the future it's all about time I believe that there's a big time um, spin on everything. And I think sometimes our ancestors are coming back in the future and we can, that's what we look like, we're sort of more alien-like in the future. So sometimes I think it's to do with wormholes and time slips. But when it comes to the, the other worlds as such, it is real. And when I've done my regression on people, I've regressed them back in hypnosis and I've turned them back to 18th century, 17th century. Then they've gone back to when they lived on Sirius. Mm -hmm. I'm like, sorry, you know, so it's mm -hmm. it's completely changed. They're not just talking about um, in the 1950s, they're talking about when they lived in the series. They're describing what it was like, they're describing the blue planet, they're describing, you know, um, big blue angels, um, galactic angels that that are real and that are here with us. So we are all, we've got all these different dimensions in one root, under one roof. Mm -hmm. And now and again, we see that. and. You know, some people believe it. In the olden days, I'd have been burnt at the stake. And then, or after that, I'd have been thrown in some asylum. The key would have been locked away. Luckily now, I'm being interviewed about it in this <laughs> yeah. day. Yeah. But I mean, you know, there's that much out there, isn't it? You don't know where to begin. But I just think it's a case of, um, hopefully, we're all starting to open up a little bit more to it now. And, you know, in the future, I think we'll all be even talking telepathically. It'll just be the norm in the future. Yeah, I totally agree. And I mean, there's so many things that are connected with 
with what we what we term as as, as aliens and there are uh, theories about poltergeist activity being um, sort of uh, aliens emitting sort of um, frequencies that create that, that kind of activity in the home. Uh, I've also come across theories recently about uh, people who do have uh, Claire um, audient clair, sentient clair, voyancy yeah. or psychic, that they are actually, um, they could actually be uh, chosen and embedded by aliens, or it could be that they are chosen because of that by aliens to be abducted and, uh, and observed. And like I say, all this for me is, I know it exists and I think I've always known it exists, yeah. but it's the last thing that terrifies me. Give it, give me a haunted building in the dark and I'm, I'm stotting yeah. with it. I'm, I can just, I can take it. But you tell me there's, there's ET going to come around the corner and I'm gone. <laughs> I am gone. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether I've had past life and bad experience about this or, and I totally agree with you about, you know, um, that thing about reincarnation and it's something I've recently touched on in, in the Fae realm as well about, you know, the idea that we can we can be reincarnated from any of the planes, any of the energetic planes, which is just yeah. mind blowing. You know, um, it is mind blowing that we, we could have been from a different planet or we could have been from a different interdimensional plane or, you know, it's, it, it's just endless, isn't it? It's just endless. Yeah. Beautiful. I have had a, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I have had a customer who who was regressed, not by myself. Um, she was regressed and she said, oh, it was amazing. Can you do the same? It was great. She said, um, I said, oh, do you, did you see your past life? And she said, yes. Yeah. She said, I was a fairy. And I said, you know, just that sentence, I know what you're saying, but not a lot of people would understand what you've just said there. Mm -hmm. But it, we are mixing, we are mixing. We're not just, we're not just humans. We are energy mm -hmm. in different realms, in different forms. Um, and we're all intermingling. So you might've had a lot of experience with the, with the, the aliens, you know, and that's why you're thinking, oh, to scare me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, cause you know, the, the power of them, but this timeline that you're on, so you may have experienced it in the past or you may have experienced it in the future. So yeah. you've got a dread, you know, there's all, it, Oh, there's so much to talk about. Yes, yeah, so I know. It's, I know. it's fascinating. And that's, I mean, that's another thing about uh, uh, time, time concepts that people, it blows people's minds. And I've, to try and ex explain to somebody in a nutshell who, who doesn't uh, understand that sort of time, con kind, time continuum and the, the, the fact that it's not linear and actually as human beings, we've put it in this linear fashion of it's in a week or it's in, in a month or it's yeah. in a year. And it's actually not, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of ebbing and flowing in, in cycles all the time and, and past and future aren't a concept, a linear concept. It's just, I mean, we could spend a whole, the whole show talking about that. And I think people just be yeah. going, Poof! yeah well, I mean, you know it's it is it is crazy but it's definitely something that i i do believe and i try and plug people to research um the concept of it because it then throws wide open our our perception on what ghosts are uh what they are what aliens are who we are and i think ultimate, yeah. ultimately that's what we're all searching for isn't it it's not so much the afterlife but who we are you know yeah. what are we and where do we go and 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 you know because we we understand that we are energetic beings and if we didn't yeah. then then you know death wouldn't be um that what it is you know and and uh, it wouldn't be frightening if if we understood about our, our energetic beings so wow I I, I, a million different I things a million different ways i could go with this <laughs> i desperately 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 want to, want to talk to you about the fairies though because um okay. I, I, um, I was intrigued when you started talking to me about your experiences and, and, the, and the enthusiasm, you know, you know, when you come across somebody and you just think, yeah, they've had those experiences, yeah. you know, yeah, this yeah. is, this is somebody who's, who's had those experiences because they are, they are absolutely phenomenal experiences that, yeah. um, and probably never, ever what you expected that interaction to be. How, how was it for you? Can you remember your first sort of Faye interaction? Well, the thing with the phase is you've got, I, I believe it's, it's very similar to um, all humans. There's some goodies and some baddies. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with the spirit world. And it's probably the same with the alien world. There's some goods and baddies. Um, so when it comes to the phase, I love magic. So I love the thought that they're magical and they're, that you can hear the laughter and it's lovely. But then there's another side, which, oh, I can't explain what it's like. It's, I get such a scary feeling. They scare me more. Um, but I, I used to make... Um, like little fairy doors and I remember once um taking a photograph of my little fairy doors with some pretend fairies on the photograph um just just to you know to show what these are fairy doors 
and on this photograph, and I really wish I could find this photograph for you, um, there was something else. And as I sort of looked closer, and it was in the woods where I took this photo, and it was like, it was like, a, it was like a little leprechaun man. That's what it looked like. And he got his hands on his hips like that, and he was just looking like this, quite angry at this photograph. And I thought, what is he? What's he? He isn't, I haven't got him there. What is he? Where has he come from? Um, and I got a very strange feeling about him. Someone's just touched me on my head as I'm talking about this now. And, you know, the one, the one thing when you start talking about this is it's like you've just, you've just, like you've just given them a telephone call and said, mm -hmm. come on. And they're all starting to come in. And, and it, it's a very strange feeling. Um, but yeah, when it comes to the faith, they are, they love us because we, we, they are, they're fascinated by us. So they are the ones that look behind the doors. And they're the ones that are just, what was that underneath the rat under the table? They are the phase. So when I've done investigations, um, I did an investigation at a big burial site. And at no point was the, you know, it was, we were talking about fairies whatsoever. Um, it was, we were looking for, to see who was in this burial ground. And I was sort of, the owner of the land was showing me around. And all I'm, th all I'm thinking of is, that there was a lot of laughter behind me with the trees and there was movement and then there was whisper, very like a, a quick whisper past my ear and I thought this isn't spirit world this is and these aren't the spirits of fairies these are fa fairies that's what's going on here um and I also got a feeling that they liked me um but I got a feeling that they didn't like the owner very much and um and he said and this happens and this, he was telling me all these terrible things that happened to him and I'm thinking that's the fae and I don't know how to say that. I don't know how to say that to him. I know exactly what that is. Um, so their energy is very, very playful and innocent and beautiful. And I think as humans, we've lost it. We've lost that energy ourselves. So if you can bring a little bit of their energy into your garden, then it's beautiful. But that isn't all that will come mm -hmm. because you open that portal and all sorts of the darker realms will come. And I also think that it's not about, it depends where you are. You can open up a portal anywhere. Um, the paranormal realms move with water. So if you've got water running under your house, there's a big chance you've got something, some sort of portal will open from the paranormal world. So if you've got water around and then you've got grass and you've got the, the, the flowers and you, and you start to you know, talk to the fairies, you will get, I can feel things all around me touching me the most. You will feel um, the, the happy fairy folk because they are sweet and lovely, but then they're not quite to be trusted, not yet. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we've, uh, we only scratched the surface of them at the moment. Um, but yeah, there's so many different things. And my sister was telling me, she said she came to my healing room one day and she said she just looked, put her head around the corner to see if I was there. And she couldn't believe her eyes. She saw a ring of fairies, she might not like me telling you this, but mm -hmm. she saw a ring of fairies that dancing around in my healing room and she saw them. Um, so, I mean, they are very much in my life, they're very much around me. Um, and it's still a very strange subject. You can talk about ghosts, you can talk about UFOs, but it's still a very weird subject to talk about with the Fae because people are still not sure. But um, they are there and they are, they are, they can be quite shy, but if you really want them to come out, they will come out, but then, then what do you do with them? Yes. It's there then. So don't just neglect them. They are, they've come to you. So mm -hmm. then you, you've got to deal with that. That's what I, that's what I think about them. Yeah, definitely. I, de I definitely agree. You've got to be and It's the same with uh, spook hunting, you know, going out on paranormal um, investigation. You've got to be very specific about what you're yeah. asking of spirit, uh, of, of any energy and any spirit, because if you're not, if, uh, you know, you, you're leaving a door wide open for anything to manifest, anything to come through. And um, yeah. especially when, you know, we're calling out in the dark as paranormal investigators for, you know, is there anybody there? Can you come and can you come and communicate with us? It's we are asking, is there anybody there? We're yeah. not saying, you know, can any good spirits come through and talk to us because we really want to get some answers to this. We're just going, mm -hmm. come on, anybody come yes. through. And I think it's because we're so hungry for, for that kind of for evidence. And it's not just that hard evidence. You know, you talked about having a photograph. It's not the hard evidence uh, that we're always after. We're, you know, there's also the, um, it's, it's the, the, it's, it's something that's going to tell us as individuals that yes I'm not mad you know that yeah. this this does exist and and um so it's not not so much proving to the rest of the world that it exists it's just that yeah I'm not, I'm not going mad I I this is this is how it is this is the world that we live in do you but I, I also think it's, it's, if you've got a, a good heart so I think if you work with an open heart um and you you know when you ask 
is there anybody there if you put intent into your voice and you work with an open heart then you will receive somebody from the spirit world saying yeah i'm here and you've just made that connection and that's the beauty of it i don't like this um provoking you know going and you wouldn't you wouldn't go out and provoke human beings so i think i'm always very much respectful of the dead as such um and uh, respectful of the fact that sometimes they don't even know the dead so yes yeah, so it's about working with an open heart and and accepting that who's going to come through basically and, and if you can handle them but um i think also there's all these different time zones i'm going back to time zones but there's all these different time zones going at the same time mm -hmm. and just now and again we just look into their time zone they look into ours and many time i've many time i've been in a situation where i've seen a spirit and they've seen me and and i've scared them they've got yeah. such a fright when they've seen me because it was more than um seeing a departed loved one or a, it was more of a time slip where they've just seen me and gone back into their time zone and thought what did i just see then so but there's lots of different oh there's so much there's so much i could talk to you about kate honestly there's so many different ways uh, that the, the 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 paranormal works um but the wonderful thing is that we can enjoy this together. We can enjoy it, you know, just, just going on these little ghost hunts and seeing who, who's out there. I think it's great, I do. Yeah, I do as well. And I think yeah. that, um, I think the fact that um, the paranormal world are embracing any, uh, you know, other than uh, the realms of, of the dead and of, of angelics and, and demons. And they're now saying, oh, there is other things out there. It just, yeah. for me, it just excites it and just shakes yeah. it up a bit more and, and makes it a lot more interesting. And the more people who are open to, uh, these experiences and the understanding of, of these different realms then I think the more that we're going to actually see these things occurring yeah. and coming through I think um, I mean this weekend that we've just had sow in Halloween and, um, and for me this has probably been uh, on a psychic level and on an energetic level one of the most powerful that I've encountered for a very long time where it's just been crazy energy absolutely crazy energy for for things coming through from <clears throat> excuse me from different realms and and i think a lot of people will have this weekend experienced that and i i'm, I'm going to ask you this because we chatted excuse me <clears throat> we chatted before um about um you're very passionate about uh, uh protection and protecting your yes. energetic as well as your your physical body um yeah when when working with these realms so what advice can you give to people about how to do that how to sort of conduct themselves uh, in a manner that keeps them and those around them safe well uh, i've noticed um especially if i do because i do two lots of um paranormal investigations i do my team into the shadows into the shadows uh, my team and then i've got <laughs> and then i've got um you know but i we talk to the public as well and I'll, we'll take the public round and um but i would say you know it's about um we don't a lot of the public will say to me don't do protection on me i want to see something mm -hmm. yeah, you'll still see something <clears throat> but you need protection so i do anyway i do i protect it as all uh, because i know that for example when i'm doing my healing i open up to my guides i have 18 spirit guides um luckily through my life I, i've got to know them and i know where they are and who they are and why they are and they are with me so they come around me they come around all the people i'm with um and they um when i'm doing healing on people they open up the portal to the light i work with the light so i i feel angels intergalactic angels as well come through um and they are really powerful my whole room just goes like a shade of platinum i can't describe it mm -hmm. um and it's it's more powerful than the demons i think uh, mm -hmm. they are really powerful and the healing's really strong so when i go out into to the paranormal world as such to do the investigations i'm trying to to i want that light to come around me again to protect me so i want to be able to see it out mm -hmm. there but not um not take anything home with me and not feel it because some of these people some of these depends where you are but you know some invest some places there's some such dark energy mm. um i don't even want to Oh, I don't even want to go there. So I just want to be protected. So I always say, you wouldn't go out in the rain without a coat on. Mm -hmm. So just imagine that you're putting up a big, massive coat, zip it right up, and that's your protection. And just do it that way. Uh, just imagine that you've got a good protection. But the same as when I'm at work and um, I do my tarot readings all day, and I do my healing, and uh, people come to come through my door every day. But I always protect myself, always, um, because I don't know who is with them neither mm. so i want to make sure that i'm safe and protected but then i also want to protect them so i'm very big on protection yes very big 
<laughs> and how and what are the simple things because not everybody's going to have access to a helen uh, in their yes. life and uh, what <laughs> what things can pe people do on a very sort of basic level to to ensure that they have some some amount of of, of safety um every day and with uh, paranormal investigation right okay so um if you've got a good imagination not everybody has you can imagine you can visualize yourself in a big white light simple just visualize this beautiful white light and keep yourself grounded it's very important to stay grounded on the earth plane when we're going on all these different realms don't go floating away keep stay here stay keep grounded on the earth plane so imagine a beautiful white light that's a very good protection or there's crystals crystals are amazing i mean i've got them everywhere all over, all over my room um and any black crystal if you wear like a big but black bracelet is such tourmaline um it's it's it will it will protect you any negative energy will go into the crystal and miss you completely um if you've got your witchy ways you know you can use a hex and spiegel which is like a uh, i've got a big necklace which is a big mirrored necklace and it's a mm -hmm. uh, hex and spiegel which is a witch's mirror so any bad thing anything bad will bounce back so mm -hmm. there's there is that way of doing it um, I, can feel, I can feel so much in this room because we're talking about it. We're invoking mm -hmm. all sorts of me and you talking. Mm -hmm. I think there's something about me and you. I think it's quite powerful. Um, so yeah, so um, it's to do with. So it depends on what you believe in. But then the very real good little thing to use is salt. My mother used to make me carry salt with me all the time. Sprinkle some salt, Helen. Sprinkle salt, um, and I'd sprinkle it round my desk at work. Sprinkle it round me, 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 me house wherever I was. Sprinkle salt everywhere so nothing bad could come and whether you believe in the old witch's tale of salt or not um it's about intent mm -hmm. so if you sprinkle even rose petals and say protect me rose petals they will because it's about your intent mm -hmm. It is totally. It's about it's about you focusing, isn't it, more than yeah. anything. And I think all yeah. these things have a vibrational quality that really enhance that that manifestation of, of um, you affirming that that is going to pr protect you. I've got a quick story to tell you about. Um, went to a location, uh, went in the basement of the location. It was a public event. And um, I, I really, really didn't like this basement. Uh, it's not often that I get a bit, bit, bit spooked by it, uh, but decided that the, the team that I was taking out, that I was going to do a full shebang protection. And I, I went a little bit overboard and where everybody else throughout the night got an amazing amount of, of um, interaction from spirit. We got nothing. Oh. Um, I know it was bizarre, but I, I had gone... I had gone way over the top with it. I, you know, I had, I'd called on my Kabbalistic work. I'd called on my witch practice work. I just called on everything because I was like, there's no way anybody um, who was with me tonight is going to get harmed. Um, and I, I was like, I was way too health and safety to the point where, to the point where we got very, well, we, we got bits and bobs, but it was compared to the other teams that were out and about that night, we've got very little. And I had to apologize to the, to the team I was taking out at the end of the night and say, you know, I think it went a bit overboard there, but that, I mean, they were perfectly fine with it. It wasn't, it wasn't a problem. They wanted to be protected more than that. And I didn't do it without their permission either. So, um, but you're yeah. quite, quite right. I mean, there is there is uh, layers that you can put up where you can see out of and you yeah. can interact. But on that particular occasion, I was just I was lock, stock and barrel. I was uh, I was hammering down the hatches on on everything. So, uh, but there I must have been something bad there. There must have been something yes. bad because if you didn't pick up anything, then you've really you, you've kept everything away. So yeah. that could have only been bad because the white light would come in. It's yeah. just the, the black, the darkness wouldn't. So I think I think hey, you're really powerful to do that. That's great that is what you've done there you know i think i think that was just sheer fear because i knew that there was something incredibly incredibly hurtful and harmful yeah. um in oh. that in that property it was it was uh, it yeah. was pretty pretty intense um but yeah yes. it's but it can, i mean it can be done and it can be done on a very personal level you were talking about you know um you can spring and, and i'm in the same same mindset as you, you can sprinkle you know bird seed down and, and you put yeah. your intention in it and your belief in it and, and it becomes yes. something incredibly incredibly powerful yes. and, you know i know people who carry all kinds of things in in the pocket for you know for good luck and fortune and whatever and it's, yeah. it, it is it's definitely a, a, a personal thing i want to ask you totally curveball here yeah and i and i do ask um and i and I, I spoke to you a little bit about this before we recording about um off the top of your head strangest experience that you've ever had what is the one that kind of stands out where you've just been you've just gone 
I have no idea about this one. I, I don't know. I don't know where to go with this one. Um, my oh, oh God, Kate. There's so, there are honestly so many because, I, like I say, all through childhood, all through teenager, young lady, getting older, everything that's happened to me, it's daily. There is something that happens which I which blows my mind, and it, and just endless things that happen. But I know the scariest thing that I could hardly even think about was was on an investigation and um uh we we got to this event can i say where it was yeah of course yeah oh so the cage in essex have you, have you been i yeah. haven't i've heard many many stories though yeah gosh yeah so i, I think i think me spirit guys just went go on go on it's okay <laughs> um <laughs> i'll just tell her um so so yeah so um i remember when we got there there was a photograph there of, of so, what a team had left beforehand and it was like a polaroid and i didn't really believe this photograph was real it was half a goat's head with a hood on it was like something out of screen and i thought well i don't really think that's happened but um we'll see what we see tonight anyway um i was i was taken in, well oh it's such a long story but i was taken into a bit of a a flash um of what i was seeing what was just ahead and they've got a lot of a lot of axes and and pretend swords and things on the walls and um suddenly i saw them all swinging and then suddenly i saw blood spurt everywhere mm. from me all over and i thought something's gonna get me I, i've just seen this is gonna happen and there's blood everywhere and i felt really really uncomfortable and and then my i've got my ouija board i've, I've got a ouija board that i've, I've had made uh, mm -hmm. my partner mark he's made it for me and it's, it's got angel coats in it makes me it's a good board it's a good mm -hmm. board and it was swinging like a pendulum the, the, it, there was some strange things happening and i looked into my scrying mirror to see who was with me because i always see somebody with me mm -hmm. and instead i saw someone behind me in my scrying mirror and as i looked it was the it was the goat the goat with the hood he was behind me he was real that picture was real he was there and and i couldn't describe this and all this happened in such a flash. Mm -hmm. And I said, we have to stop, we have to stop, we have to stop. I just knew that this was so dangerous. And um, switch the lights on, blow the candles out. I started playing angelic music and opened the door. And at that moment, it was like a horror film. It was quite amazing, really. Uh, there was a huge uh, electrical storm. All this lightning appeared as I opened the door. It's so dramatic. Um, and I said, we've got to stop now. And I just knew we had to stop in there because there was something in there which had been unleashed. And um, that wasn't human. It wasn't. I, I, it was. It was from some. It was from. Um, I felt like a two thousand year old hole portal somewhere, mm -hmm. which should have been kept closed, and it's still open to this day. That is. Um, so yeah. So I think that was my scariest moment. The fact that I saw this so so real. But every day is a school day. You you, you learn different things every day. Um, but then on the magical, my most magical side of things, um, it always goes back to, to the Fae. And I used to live in Jersey. And um, in Jersey, it's very magical. Have you been there, Kate? No, I'd love to go. You'd love it. Oh, you just love it. Um, and it's all, there's magic uh, there. There's magic on the islands. And, and I used to, that's why I used to do all my ghost tours and take people around. And, and um, the, it, it is amazing. And there's, there was there's something there was something called there it was a legend legend says that there's a little pukale and it's like a, a little imp with a tail and it's it's been seen you know hundreds of years ago and well i saw it now mm. <laughs> i saw it um and i saw it just running along the beach and it was like a, a kind of a monkey i suppose you'd mm -hmm. think with this tail mm -hmm. and it just sort of looked and uh, and it was magical it had a, it was lit it was silver it had a silver light about it it was lit up and it was actually i thought it was quite high frequency i thought because i think the fae are all high frequency mm. um so i quite liked this magical and i thought you're real you're real what the what the people here i don't know whether you've got to have a certain frequency yourself to, to mm. tune into it certainly nobody else on the beach went what's that mm. but I, I i saw the people uh, so I know I know it exists. I love anything to do with legends. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of magic untouched in Jersey. You've got to go there. I've got to go. Definitely. I, I was <laughs> I was saying the other day. I've 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 sat down and and um, I've I've been writing a list of of the places. Obviously, you know, C19 lockdown or whatever. You, I'm not going to get yeah. this year, but fingers crossed, starting from next spring. And I was up to uh, the other day. I think I was up to 124 sites around Britain. 
Oh um, wow! Some some of them I have visited in the past and and uh, and, and documented stuff. But um, w there is so many so many places that um, uh, and people are telling me all the time, like like yourself yeah. about Jersey and, yeah. and and this particular character. I d before before I forget this, I, I do want to sort of touch upon something you said about your fearful experience at the cage, and then I do want to then fast forward back to to your experience on Jersey. Um, you you were talking about the, the a portal portal and you um that feeling that you felt like it had been opened up and uh one of the things that um i i've come across uh, within the paranormal community is um that feeling that these portals can be opened uh inadvertently a lot of the time by uh paranormal investigators going into buildings on a regular basis where, where do you yeah. sit with that theory where do you think that uh, what do you think about that I know because you know these the the, the most oh, I know the most like places that are really really haunted. Um, there's there's groups going in and not really really not known. I mean, I see luckily I can see energy and I know whereabouts to stand and I know wh where we're going to get some activity. I can see where it's going to happen um, and I can just see everything forming around me. It's, it's very strange how I can see it. I can see it all. Um, whereas just some team that's just going in and going, right, is there any ghosts? See, is there any? And I just think you're invoking it. You're invoking it. You're invoking it. Then the next one, invoking it. What are we opening up? What mm -hmm. are we opening up? Our brains are not made to understand this yet. Mm -hmm. We can't possibly understand this. We'll understand it all when we pass, when we transition, mm -hmm. when we pass over, and we'll go, oh, God, we shouldn't have done that, should we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we still keep making the same mistakes because the spirit world has got rules. Mm -hmm. They can't just keep coming through. You know, my boyfriend always says, how come they just come through and give us a little whistle or a little growl? Why mm -hmm. don't they actually? And I say, it's, there's rules. You can't mm -hmm. use it as a telephone line, same as when you lose your loved ones. You can't just phone up the spirit world and talk to them all the time there's certain rules they can't give too much away but but there are some energies out there which which can um give a little bit which can be harmful i do think they can harm you and they can suck the life out of me i never say use my energy i never say that no, you know people neither. say use my energy. I no i never say yeah. that i think don't don't touch my energy yeah, yeah. i always think that um uh, the, use the energy of the equipment that's quite good if you've got mm -hmm. a lot of equipment there great use that energy but not not mine mm -hmm. because when you do a reading as you know on the mediumship side you're opening your aura up to mm -hmm. for the spirit world beautifully to come through so you can connect to them i don't want that with dark spirits so no. um so and i know you know we're, we're the same very much we're alike um so when it comes to um actual going to the same place over and over again i think there should be a priest that follows um, all these teams round and every now and again just throw some holy water on it and make it all you know calm again mm -hmm. we went to um the skirred Inn, you know and yeah. um they've got the devil's cup there in the on the in the wall where you know they, they would have give wine to to the they would have put filled it with wine and in the morning the wine would be gone uh, mm -hmm. and that's where they believed many years ago they were so scared weren't they of, of, of god and the devil and yeah um and, and we took some holy water there and uh, we filled the cup with holy water and we thought that would be nice. Um, and we did think maybe it might, I, I wasn't sure what would happen to be honest. I was a little bit nervous about what would happen with that. Mm -hmm. But it, it actually seemed to calm things down. Um, and so I don't know what happened after that. A few people came and it was just all quiet. But it does seem to calm things down. So I do think that every now and again, let's just close these portholes a little bit mm -hmm. um, because it doesn't have to be a haunted house. You can mm -hmm. stand in the middle of the road um, and open up a portal. I mean, the Romans would have built that road, so they yeah. might hear you. You could be anywhere, really. I think if something's over investigated, then I'd probably, I'd probably try and go somewhere that hasn't really a little bit more untouched. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think if you're calling out and you've got an intent to, to yeah. communicate with spirit, it doesn't matter whether yeah. it's a, a time aged haunted property, does it? It, it can be yeah. absolutely anywhere because you know, we live on a planet where uh, every square foot somebody has died. Unfortunately, you know that that's yes. part of life that that, yeah. that that occurs and people do leave their their imprint. Definitely, I want to take you back again to uh, to the Jersey County P Pukele. Is that is that Pukele. the way? Pukele. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm. I'm kind of figuring that's a, a kind of um, a derivative of the puka, which is uh, it definitely went over to America. That name, uh, the puka, and sometimes uh, we hear it in in Irish uh, fairyology as well, and not so much in in uh, in the UK. But you spoke about um, this high frequency uh, level, energy level that that, that the yeah. uh, transmit out, and I, I definitely agree with you uh, yeah. with that. And the, the light, they admit. 
as well which um yeah. it, there was another thing that I, I wanted to talk to you about was um having the eyes to see isn't it and yeah. i often wonder why some people can and other people can't when you are stood in exactly the same place and yeah. um what do you think that is what why do you why do you think that some people are more in tune we are we are a radio transmitter so by t tuning in you've got all these different levels of radio that you go through i always say you know like um when i do when i when i tune someone to reiki i tune them to a to a different frequency and I, and it and it means that they will go it's a higher frequency so mm. they will always have that higher frequency now so then the more attunements and the more they start to live their life on that level because you can still sort of um go back to where you were I, I, you know as long as you've come from the attunement then you start to live your life on that level you're raising you're really and going up a, up a notch as such all my team are all reiki attuned um mm. because i believe that um you know it's to do with the, the chakras are cleansed i've done healing sessions before actually done a healing session before uh, going into an investigation so we're all open and, and mm -hmm. feeling good and balanced and um and of course you can do hypnosis as well to open up people's minds oh there's so much there's so much yeah. uh, but <laughs> but um when it comes to that raising that frequency and then the people on that different level spot things we can we're all in the same room and if a, a beautiful um you know I can see them now, the lights that they've got, they've got these lights that they come with and the, and even in the darkness, they're so bright and you see them and um, it's because I'm, I'm already on their level. So that's mm -hmm. why I'll also probably hear them. I'll probably hear, the, hear them before I see them. Um, yeah, I think I will. I'd, I'd hear them before I see them. Whereas some people will go, well, oh, I think I just saw an orb. I think yeah. it wasn't an orb, it was a fairy, but we'll, uh, we'll go down that path another time. So mm -hmm. it is difficult to explain sometimes. But I just think it's to do with, um, I think it's to do with different levels. I think it's to do with having a good heart. So I think if you've got a good heart uh, and you're, you're open and you work with integrity, then the faith will come to you more, um, more so. But also laughter, banter, giggling, that sort of thing will bring them in. Because I've been told many a time that I'm far too happy on an investigation. And they said, could you, you know, smiling all the time? I'm going, I know, because when you see something from the spirit world, it's so exciting. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't just go, yeah, I've seen one over there. I've got one over there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, no, it's exciting. Yeah, it's the spirit world. So you get excited. And I think that level puts me on the fey level. That's, yeah. that's what I think that is. Yeah. I, I totally agree with with um, yeah. when when you're working on all of these these realms that um, there, there's absolutely nothing like the curiosity of, of the other realms when when you you know you're larking about most of the time yeah. that teams that go out and do uh, team team events only it's it's usually when they're the, the mucking about that things actually start occurring you know you can be all serious and sat in a room and you know getting all your equipment set up and uh, tuning yeah. into everything but it is when i mean i'm pretty um pretty well known f to some people for my singing when when i oh. when i nothing no 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 but it's nothing great honestly it's it, when i'm on an investigation and things are on a lull yeah i do threaten yeah. the spirit world with my singing and it do has you? it has worked on occasion and it's it's not great i think it annoys them um and it's with my intention that it becomes sort of a cheeky annoyance but i have had some amazing results i'm not going to tell you what song i usually sing i'm sure somebody will somebody will pop up under the youtube oh, wow. message and tell you what what song it is but yeah it's it's definitely one to try and it's huge i i'm quite a high high uh, I've got a high curiosity level, so if something kind of, if it starts slipping my interest, yeah. uh, if the spirit world starts slipping my interest, I'm like, well, I've got to do something to entertain myself, you know, um, in a dark room. And uh, yeah, so I don't well, what, Go on. That's great because you're raising the energy. When, yeah. when you sing, singing, that's very, that is definitely what the, the pixies love. They love yeah. that. Mm. They'll, they'll be singing with you. So yeah. when, you, when, you, when you're going on to the, um, the fairy folk, as such as I call them, the fairy folk, um, singing is definitely going to bring them in music definitely and also raising the vibration because a lot of the time when you're sitting quiet you go so anybody there you're, silent. Mm -hmm. you're just silent and me and mine i'm thinking oh can we just play some music and laugh because at that mm -hmm. moment some some rem pod will go off somewhere because yeah. you're you've 
the higher your energy, the more the spirit world attached to it come through on it. It's the vibration. So the more you're talking, like me and you just having a chat like this, we'll be bringing all sorts in, the mm. vibrations on our voice. And they're coming in the spirit world. When you're sitting in quietness, it is difficult. They've got not, not, nothing to attach to, really. Yeah. So I think your singing is great. <laughs> that's great. Honestly, that's a great idea. That's great. Yeah, the, the spirit world don't agree with that one, believe me. <laughs> I've, I've, had, I've had spirits come through absolutely audibly <laughs> groaning every time I sing. I and, I've, and we've had DVPs with multiple people hearing this, uh, kind of, shut oh. up, <laughs> shut up, you know. Oh and I've just carried on because I, I, I get cheeky about these things. So I, I just... Yeah. Carried. But I, I, I do agree. It's, it's that high energy. If, you, if yeah. it helps pump our light out and our light is yeah. there to be seen and, and, and they'll definitely, definitely come in. I'm not talking about yeah. you know, being disrespectful for the dead, which is a, a, a totally different yeah. thing. If I was in spirit, and I had the choice between, um, you know, going to a, a group of people who were just sat around going, is there anybody there? Or if I was to go to somebody who was mucking and larking about a bit or asking more intriguing questions. I yeah. mean, this is another thing within the paranormal. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's that whole kind of um, repetition of the same questions. I mean, I, I do feel for spirit sometimes and think, I'm not quite sure I want to answer this one again. You know, you just get that feeling yeah. of, do I really have to say who I am again? Do I really have to tell you what year I died? It's, um, I think we should think okay. of more in, ingenious, ingenious things to ask. Really, it's um, we're going off on way too many tangents. It's I great. <laughs> I know, but sometimes they are scared, you know, because sometimes they they can see you in their house and they really don't know they're dead, and you're their yeah. ghost. Yeah. You are their ghost. So they, they, that is another thing, you know, they've they, got a bit of a shock when they see you mm -hmm. or, you know, where they'll see all these lights and cameras and we're going, talking to this machine, this one with the flashing lights. And yeah. they're like, I don't even know what a machine is. So mm -hmm. it's scaring them. And then another thing is, um, you know, the Ouija board. I do love my Ouija board. I absolutely adore it. It's got lots of angel codes and it's very safe. But a lot of people couldn't even read and write in mm -hmm. them days, yeah. you know. So, so that's another thing. So it's... There's just all different ways of communicating. The best vessel is uh, your your energy yourself connecting with them. Mm -hmm. But that, if you did a you know a show as such where you would just say, "I can feel this and feel that," oh, they've just said this to me. And that spirit's really funny. Then of course nobody's going to believe that because mm -hmm. you're still talking to something invisible. So it's still we still have to somehow show the world. But I have found um, that when you do come up with some fantastic photographs, then no one believes it. If it's yeah. that good, there was there was one day, and it, and this is a, a pixie story. Uh, there was one day I, I was it's an investigation, and a face appeared on this photograph, um, and this photograph is has since been taken down, and I can't get the original back, which is such a shame. But mm -hmm. this photograph, and it was the most innocent, gorgeous face, and and it's got like little pixie ears, and it was a proper, it was like a little, it was definitely. Um, it was definitely fake, definitely. And, um, and just so, so innocent, this face. And, and we captured it and it was brilliant. And it, and it went everywhere, this photograph, it went viral. And there wasn't one person that said, wow, that looks like you've got a face. It just said, Photoshop, Photoshop, Photoshop. And no one believes it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, when we get the best evidence ever and, you, and people don't believe it, and then you think, well, what's the point? So I think it's a shame, isn't it? Because you just want to show the world that it does exist. But I also believe that this is just something I'm just going to put out there for the future. I believe that, you know, in the, the spiritual side of things, so you open your aura up and the spirit worlds are coming into your aura. I believe that we'll find a way to light our aura up and show you who's in our aura. I believe yeah. that's what psychics will do in the future. At the moment, you know, the years ago, they used to have transfiguration. Mm -hmm. They'd have, the, the, you know, they'd appear in front of people. Um, but I think now with the mobile phones and your televisions and computers, it's sort of breaking down the network a little bit to yeah. us in the spirit world. But I do believe that one day somehow we'll be able to open up our aura and show you who's there. So, you know, we'll be our own machine. Then we should throw in a psychic in the room saying, right, open up your aura. And then suddenly <laughs> you'll see all these spirits appearing um, because, you know, you kind of, you can do that a little bit now with like the stone tape therapy where you, you, mm -hmm. you're seeing, you know, you, you're seeing this, the, in the mist or the smoke, you start to see faces. So mm -hmm. I think when we get, when we capture that, that will prove more than ever that it does exist, but it does exist. It does. I believe too. <laughs> definitely. I know I'm very conscious of time and we, we're, we're getting near to time and 
and before we go I, 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 I do I really uh, genuinely want you to do some some uh, shameless plug-in I really shouldn't call it that it sounds really bad but, um, uh, where can people find you where can people get therapy from you what platforms are you on I want to know everything right well so um, my website is heavenlyhelen.co.uk and uh, that's my main the hub, hub where I speak to people and then on my Facebook Heavenly Helen mm -hmm. but the thing is I'm fully booked a year in advance so all my bookings now i've got nothing until um i think it's next november the end of november or something wow. there's no there's no slots at all and i've got over 600 people on my waiting list so it's 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 i'm busy yeah. so what i've set up only this last month i've set up um a patreon account so i've got patrons so this way people can subscribe it's great so it means that they can come with me everywhere i go they can become part of my life become my little shadows basically because everything that i'm talking to you about now i'm doing zoom classes with them um and then I'm, I'm doing videos for them i'm helping them to open the chakras up in the morning and you know showing them what mudras to use how to have your hands and what words to say we, we do everything from the spiritual realms realms to crystals uh, to dreams um to horror and paranormal so there's all different tiers what people can join so for example i've got one which is my silver tier as such so then that's so that's 10 pounds and they can become uh, a patron of mine and it means that they can do all my zoom classes we can do videos we can do healing uh tarot i do tarot twice a month with them uh, or they can go up a level to the gold one where they can come on an investigation with me and that's really exciting because i can take them all in my ipad in my arms mm -hmm. keep them safe or all, all me all my customers all safe and then we go down and into a cellar and then they can do a little call out i put protection around them it's like they really stood with me but they're actually at home in bed with the blankets over mm -hmm. them all snuggled up it's the best front front of house seat ever mm -hmm. so yeah so this is my patreon so it's patreon.com heavenly helen but it's all on my website heavenly helen thank okay. you for that Kate. All on my that's website, okay yeah. And, and can people find you on other platforms facebook twitter instagram yes all of them <laughs> facebook twitter facebook's my big one um mm -hmm. twitter as well uh instagram not so much on i'm not so much on there um and but on my facebook I, I put things on every night i do time for tarot um i do um all all the different things that i know people would love to talk about i'll, I'll put it up out there mm -hmm. um and we have some great great communication with my customers i love me with customers i i I love that. I love the fact that when I was young, nobody wanted to know this, and I was constantly, you know, beaten up at school. Um, and now, as a as an adult, I love the fact that they they draw in and want to know, and they all want to be attuned or want to open up their psychic energy. And I think the more the merrier. The more the merrier. We should all open up our sixth sense. We should all be attuned as a child. Um, we should all have that natural. I think the world would be a better place. Definitely. Absolutely. And thank you. I know you're a super, super busy lady. Um, and, and, and thank you for taking taking the time out. You know, we're, we're, we're just just getting onto that hour since we, we started because we're chatting a little bit a little bit before. But yeah, you yeah. Know, I, I know how, how, how precious your time is. And, uh, and I, I do genuinely, genuinely uh, appreciate that that you've come on and, and chatted to us. And uh, I know we're going into lockdown, Aww. but I, I know that you're good. You're never going to not be busy. You're never not going to be like working no. and helping people. I know I'm always busy. Yeah, I think it's yeah. your energy. Your yeah. energy just sort of draws that in, sort of creates it and draws it in. So Helen, thank you so so much. Uh please thank please you. Stick, stick around for a few minutes after I, I stop recording and uh because okay. I'd love to have a chat with you and and I'm sure uh, in the future people would love to see you back uh to maybe ask some some, some more questions. So thank you very much. Thank you. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Bless you. I've got to find stop record now. <laughs>